Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, great to see everybody. Um, tough, tough loss on, on Saturday. And um, you know, we had a, a pretty good meeting yesterday with our leadership council and uh, a couple things. One, how proud we were of, of the effort and uh, how the guys fought and battled and played. Texas is really good. We all know that. And um, I don't know if there's a lot of teams that could – go in there, be down 17 nothing, and not do anything right in the whole first half, offense, defense, or on teams, and then flip the flip the game with the punt block to get it at least competitive at halftime. And then we go down 27 to 7. Things weren't going really great, and all of a sudden, uh, we put a great drive together, get it to 27-14, and then we start creating some turnovers, and lo and behold, we're in a game and have a chance to win. And uh, it's a credit to the locker room. It's a credit to the culture. Our guys are hurting. That uh, um, We had a chance and opportunity to win the game, didn't get it done. Biggest thing for us now is we've got to move forward. Um, you know, we always talk about how you respond. Well, this is a little bit different. We had uh, a top five team, in my opinion, on the ropes. Um, uh, they they made some plays down the stretch uh, and, and found a way to win. Um, hats off to them. Now we've got to be able to move on. We've got to be able. We've got so much story to write in this season and so many more things to accomplish and, and, and some uh, awesome opportunities. And the first one starts this Saturday uh, with one of our last two for these seniors at the Bill. And uh, so we had a really good practice after a meeting yesterday. We had a really good practice, good energy, good focus. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm confident the guys are going to come, come back and respond. How much did uh, In the early in the game, you mean? Yeah, the field yeah uh, some of it. Um, they, we were they were getting after us. I mean, we were having a hard time moving them. Um, we were trying to establish the 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 run game, and they were they were doing a great job of saying, "Man, you, you we're going to put enough guys up there. We're not going to allow you to run the football." And we just didn't. We had some long yardage situations that were just putting us behind the eight ball, and and then on the flip side. We were in such poor field position on defense when we were giving up chunks on first down that uh, we never really got our footing um, until later in that uh, second half. Maybe a little bit too slow to go to that, but a little bit more of the aerial game? Um, no. I, I mean, I, I trust what Colin was, was doing uh, and trying to establish. We're, we're not a team built to go to the air raid. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, I – we were trying to find ways to run the football just so we wouldn't get into second and 10 and third and 10. But um, I thought in the second half we had to press a little bit more, um, and we were able to do that. A couple things. I thought our pass protection from our offensive line was, was tremendous. And um, I thought Will Howard uh, was on point, played with an edge, uh, made some big, big time throws, uh, especially off platform when he gets, you know, flushed and stuff. And uh, we had some receivers, and, and uh, Ben always comes to play. Ben, Ben Sennett's a great football player. We all know that. We had some receivers really step up, and, and please, um, with Keegan making the strides that he's made and made some big plays, Philip always is making big plays, but in that kind of environment was big, and then Jace as well. So uh, we did some good things in the throw game. Absolutely. Um, when you do it in in that kind of environment with whatever ninety hundred thousand and and uh, having to throw it when they know you have to throw it and we're able to still do it um, and we got good protection like I said and um, you know I, I sure hope it gives us a lot of confidence. And just one more uh, with the way Baylor's kind of struggled, is it indicative of how difficult the Big yeah, I think we all know how difficult the Big 12 is. At least we do as coaches. And um, um, uh, this, we're going to get Baylor's best. Um, they haven't lost on the road. They haven't played very many on the road, but they haven't lost on the road. Got two Big 12 wins. Uh, I've got so much respect for Dave Aranda. Um, they're two years removed from a Big 12 championship. Quarterback's a really, really good player. Um, I have liked him since the day he came in here in 2021, I think it was, and had to be a backup and came in and, and played really well. And I think he's got that it factor. And so it's gonna, we're going to have to play our best to be able to have an opportunity to be successful. Jay Clifton got elevated to starting middle yeah. I know you guys have been super impressed with how he's played, but what kind of way that? Um, well, 
he deserved the opportunity. Austin missed, I uh, can't remember what game it was now. It's running together. And so we moved him to the Mike backer spot, and he had played that before. And then we were trying to rotate guys in the next week and felt like um, Jake is playing at a high enough level. We need to get him more snaps, so that's why we ended up moving him in. Uh, Romaine still played. Um, you know, Dez and, and Austin are playing a lot of a lot of snaps of football right now, and, and we're piecing them together each week, Austin and Dez, because I really think those two guys are as good an outside linebacker combo as there is in the Big 12. Um, and, and Jake deserves that opportunity. Austin's doing a great job, Austin Romaine is, but Jake um, – uh, probably knows our defense maybe a little bit better, but um, we're going to need all those guys because we we still are thin at that spot. Yeah. Well, he he can run the football, um, design runs, um, scrambles. He had a scramble last week against Houston to keep the game alive. It was fourth and seventeen. And um, really their last chance. And a lot of times you think, hey, I'll just throw it up and see if somebody can make a play. And instead, he scrambled around, made a few guys miss, cut back, and made a play that I've seen him make before. Uh, I think he throws the ball with great authority. I think he's on point throwing the football. They have a really difficult scheme to defend because you better be able to slow down their run game. It's hard to do, but you better be able to because they're so consistent at rushing the football. And then him out of the pocket, him in the pocket. He does some really good things, so we'll have our hands full. And then after the game on Texas, then Vincent had uh, some pretty, pretty fiery calls yep. sticking up for Will Howard. How, what, what, what's your reaction to that? Kind of have that, that well, I mean, those two are best friends, and um, he's battling for his buddy. And, and whether he was frustrated or not, I didn't hear the comments, but uh, he's battling for his buddy. Um, but, um, you know, um, we all have Will Howard's back. Um, I'm telling you, um, that kid's a winner, and he's a competitor, and um, he made plays, made big-time plays. Yep, had a couple of things go wrong against a defense like Texas. You're going to have that happen, but he kept bouncing back and kept – I just saw an edge – Every time we came off the field and every time he went on the field, hey, let's give me the ball back, give me the ball back. And I'm, he threw a couple of balls. The one to Jace right after the turnover was um, a big-time throw. But he, he threw some balls off, off of scrambling, and he was fighting for his tail off to try to stay, a, stay up. And I thought Will played exceptional. Well, we'll find out again, D. Scott. Um, but uh, I, I sure hope and and think it's it's the uh, and believe it's the guys in the locker room. Um, we had a leadership council meeting yesterday. There's probably 20, 21, 22 guys on that, and they were locked in. And um, you know, uh, we've got a lot of football left, and we have a lot of opportunities in front of us. And and you know, this the great thing about the game of football is you're always on a one week season. You, you really are, and as as bad as you can feel after a loss, you can have that exhilaration after a win, and it gets you pumped up for the next week. And um, our, our guys know how great it is and know that exhilaration of a win. They know how awful it is in that locker room for the guys after a loss, and that's the thing that when when you see it as a head coach and you see, I don't care if it was Missouri, Oklahoma State, or Texas, three pretty good teams we've we've lost to, and see the hurt on those guys' faces and eyes in the locker room that, man, we had a chance, we had an opportunity, and we didn't get it done. And then see the exhilaration, and I don't care if it's SEMO or I don't care if it's Houston or TC or whoever else we've we've beaten. Uh, those guys love competing and, and, and winning. And um, I think they reflect our, our team as far as those 21 leadership council guys because they hold each other and everybody on the team to a standard of, hey, I mean, we're on a we're on a one week season, and you better win every day to have a chance. And what is the sense of pride this team takes in defending home? Oh, big time! Um, 
we got the greatest fans in college football, in, in my opinion and our players' opinion, that they come out in droves for these guys and they uh, love their Wildcats. And, and um, you know, you can, you know, the hair on the back of your neck just stands up thinking about that tunnel opening up and, and uh, seeing the great fans out there uh, as you're running out of the tunnel, let alone when you're coming out for warm-ups in our student section and our band's there and it's cranked up and, you know, the catwalk that we do uh, that we implemented a couple of years ago and seeing uh, all the fans in line when, when you come off the buses, it's important. And uh, that's something that uh, doesn't happen at a lot of places in college football, and it happens here for sure. You uh, won the coin flip and actually uh, deferred. Yeah. Yep. You, you know, no, it's all based on the wind, Ernie. That That's the biggest thing for us. It's based on the wind um, because if you take the football and it's windy and they pin you down there and you can only punt the ball 25, 30 yards, you don't anticipate them pinning you. But if they did or you get a holding or something, now you're giving them a 45, 50-yard field. And so – that's kind of why we did that. Every week it's a little different. It has nothing to do with do you feel better about your offense, feel better about your defense. It's what's the wind doing? Is it a factor in the kicking game? I didn't think it was a factor in the throw game on Saturday. It was definitely a factor in the in the kicking game. And so we wanted to, to have that and um, put them – back and pin them. They did a nice job driving it. We ended up getting a stop, but uh, uh, that's more what played into it. So getting the ball in the second half isn't really a... You know, we talk, it's important, but you, you're going to have it either the start of the first or start of the second. And, um, you know, we have our middle, middle eight or four over four where we're trying to win the end of the first half and start of the second half. Um, we're always focusing on that no matter what. Um, but um, a lot of it for us depends on the wind. Yes, he'll keep playing uh, a, a handful of spots. You know, we're in a we're in a better situation now as far as we've got three games left. You guys know we played a ton of guys in the first game against Troy or against Simo. We played a ton of guys there. Well, that was one of those guys' games. So with how the the rule is now, we have a lot of guys that were liking to redshirt that were able to play these next three games and then still keep their red shirt because postseason doesn't count. They put that they put that rule in um, actually after the Big 12 championship game last year. They put it in for the bowl game. But now uh, any postseason game doesn't count towards their four. And so I'll take a guy like Rex Van Wy that's played in one game. We're trying like heck to hold him off. Now we don't have to, whether it's on special teams, whether it's giving Austin Moore a break, we can roll the guy with uh, the games we have left. I think you listed Bo Palmer at the will. Yep. That, he's just because he's rotating. I mean, Steve does such a great job of, of giving all those guys snaps, gives Toby snaps at Sam um, to help Dez and to help Clifton, gives Bo snaps at Mike and at Will, gives Rex snaps. It's just, uh, um, you know, it, it, I, I don't know who would go out there first, but um, we've got some versatility there. You bet. Uh, we had them on their heels a little bit, um, especially after the um, after the after the fumble. You know, the one we had a really short field after Jacob Parrish's pick, and then we had a short, you know, relatively short field after the fumble, and it was very quick. I think mean, maybe it was one or two plays on defense, and and so um, I really I think he saw a look, um, and Will saw it pre-snap. And I thought he he ripped a, a post uh, to Jace. It was a great throw and a great catch. How much flexibility does it give you to have the equivalent of four cover corners out there at any given time? It helps us um, for sure. Um, you know, and I think you're referring to putting Jacob inside and, and having Siegel as well. But, uh, you know, we, we did what we thought we were hopeful for and we haven't been able to do for a while in the fact of Parrish, Garber, and Will Lee all played a significant amount. It wasn't, you know, I, a couple of them maybe had 10 snaps more, but it wasn't 35, 40 snaps more. And um, on the field, it was hot uh, on Saturday. It, it got really warm, especially in that second half. 
And so we needed to rotate guys. We were still struggling to rotate and get Dez and Austin out of there. That's why they're not on special teams. Um, but uh, hopefully we can have that uh, elim eliminated this week. Yeah, uh, I, I th he continues to improve. Um, he continues to challenge himself. Um, you know, I, I th we talk, I think Texas is, has two of the best wide receivers, the tandem as there are in the country. Uh, I'm sure there's other schools that that have really good players, but together those two uh, cause a lot of problems for a defense. Then you throw the tight end in there, and. Um, we really put those guys in a tough spot because we had to try to stop the run, and we, you know, we gave up some shot plays, and so then we flipped and um, played a little bit deeper safety. Uh, but you still didn't have much help on the outside, and I, I thought Will and Jacob and Keenan really did a nice job. I thought Will in the run game really was good. Um, saw some things, put his face in there. Um, uh, made some really good tackles, which we have to do as much unbalanced and you know what we call nub side or tight inside run game as we've seen. So um, it's fun to see uh, him play at that high level. Yeah, we made some adjust adjustments. Um, I think Texas is pretty good up front, um, and uh, their backs are pretty good. And you throw that on top of the schemes pretty good. And they caught us on some things in the run game and pass game of just doing a phenomenal job of scouting, whatever you want to say, of here's where our weakness is. And we know the same thing. It's a matter of can we cover it up. And um, yeah, it's why they are where they're at right now is they've got really good players, a really good scheme. And our guys probably got settled in a little bit more and um, kept fighting. And um, we had some guys make some unbelievable plays up front. You know, our defensive line played exceptionally well under tough circumstances, being outweighed by 60 pounds a guy at times, um, especially at our defensive end spots. But those guys battle. You know, it's fun to watch what what Khalid, Mott, Stuff, Matlock do. Man, I mean, there's 320, 330 pound O tackles and guards, and those guys are on that 245, 240, 250 range. And those guys play with heart. They play with tenacity. They play with great technique. Coach White, Coach Tui do a phenomenal job. They just kept battling. And uh, you guys are right. Clifton made some plays. Dez, Austin made some plays. Siegel and Kobe made some plays in the run game. And we had – that was a friggin' battle. And our guys stayed in the fight even when it didn't look good. I mean, that first half, it could have been a lot. And we found ways to, to hold them out. Um, and make a couple plays. You also did get the block. That was, that was a big thing in the game. Did you? Really yeah. You we did. We thought we could block a punt. We should have blocked two. We should have blocked the last punt of the game. Um, we had it, and, and we actually could have had a chance to block three. We blocked one. One, we just didn't get there, and the other one, uh, we had a, 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 a a fundamental technique error. I think we'd have, with a minute and a half left, we'd have blocked the last punt. Um, but we had a really good plan for it. And we didn't know what kind of return we could get with the speed they had on there. But with some of the things we saw in their protection, we really thought we had an advantage there. And we needed to do something like that. Um, you know, the kickoff returns are out of the end zone, right? I mean, so you're not getting a chance there. And so, you know, with it being a difficult game to return it, we had to make something happen special uh, on special teams, and, and we were able to do that. And that really that really kind of flipped the momentum a little bit um, to end that first half. Mitch, after the game, that fourth down play, you certainly would have gone for it again. Is the dialogue, is that the discussion about going for it on fourth down, was that decided between third and fourth down, or was that talked about? It was talked about when we went to overtime, that we were going to have a chance we were going to win the game. We... We didn't have a lot left in the tank, honestly, with the amount of guys that we uh, had playing as many snaps. Uh, I didn't know if we'd stop them. I thought we had a chance, but if, if we didn't stop them and they scored and kicked the PAT, we were going to match that, score a touchdown, and go for two and try to win. On the flip side, 
once we got the stop, they they made the field goal. Um, if it were anything, probably fourth and five or or less, we were going to go for it. If it was fourth and eight, we probably would have kicked the field goal just because that's a little bit harder. But this is one yard outside of a outside of a, a two point conversion, and um, we went there to win. We went there to win the game, and um, I don't know. We also had some struggles. You know, we we had um, a miscommunication on a snap, and we had a, a missed field goal. And I just didn't want. I'm, I'm confident we would have been able to do those things and and execute it. But if we didn't, I didn't want to go in that locker room after and miss two short field goals and say we didn't put it on a bunch of fifth, sixth year seniors up front and a, a fifth year quarterback that um, was really had a hot hand. Yep. Yep. No, and I didn't really say anything to him after it. I mean, um, he he knows he's got to make the kick, but there's there's. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, I've missed a four foot putt, and then I got to come back and make four foot putt on the next hole to try to have a chance, right, Wyatt? And the only thing different is he kicks field goals better than I putt. Um, but so you don't really say anything to him. Um, I I have a lot of confidence in Randon, Jack, Chris. Those three guys have great dialogue and conversation on the sideline, and I'm sure those two calmed him down, probably like he calmed Randon and Jack down when we had the miscommunication on the snap on the PAT. Yeah, those things stink. We don't want those things to happen. They did, and that's part of this crazy game of football that that happens. I'm sure they didn't want to throw an interception at the eight-yard line like they, they did to us. You know, um, We had a couple opportunities to, to pick the ball, and we dropped a couple. It's just – this game is is so crazy that you just you never know. There's probably not anybody in this room, maybe even including myself, that when it's 27 to seven with four minutes left in the third quarter, we said we're getting this thing to overtime. Been a pretty big task, um, but you just never know. That's why you just keep plugging away, play after play after play. Our guys didn't panic, none of that stuff. We just kept playing and kept playing. Then we'll look up at zeros and see where we're at. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it was. Um, we were going to go for it had we had a fourth and one. It was third and one, and we lost two yards. And we got crushed at the line of scrimmage on that play. And um, I was like, shoot, let's just tie the game. And credit to our players, credit to our guys, because they bailed me out, they bailed Chris out in the fact of, we lose a couple yards. Yep, I thought about it. Nope, let's tie the game. Let's let's we've battled our tail off. Let's tie the game. Probably why I didn't do it the next time. But the fact that we went from third and one to fourth and three, we kicked the field goal, miss it. We got our three timeouts left, and our defense goes out there and stuffs them. And they know we're gonna what our defense is in. They know exactly what we're gonna be in, and we know probably what plays they're gonna run, and we stop them. Use our timeouts get the ball kicked, and I would tell you, Colin Klein thought we were going to score a touchdown. And we had a couple really good plays to at least get us a shot. And I was pretty confident. Um, honestly, Chris wasn't going to miss that kick with whatever seconds left. And it was, what was it, a 45-yarder or something? And he banged that thing. And um, that's I was so proud of us getting back to that moment. And that's why once we got to overtime, um, we were going to find a way to give ourselves a chance to win it. Yep. Yeah, who knows? You know, this game's crazy. Um, and we we lost to Texas last year, and we had to have a lot of help and stuff. But the only thing you can do is control what you can control. Um, and uh, I, I'm still excited. I think we have a really good football team still. And um, we have a lot of great things to play for. And, and us having an opportunity to play at home again against Baylor is really big. Guys, we're 6-3. and three. We lost on a 60-yard field goal. We lost against Oklahoma State when we all know we played a really poor football game. Oklahoma State's obviously really, really good, and we got the ball at the 30-yard line with a chance to tie that game at the end. Texas is one of the best teams in the country, and we get beat on the last play of the game. Our program's in pretty good shape right now. We're going to be okay, and 
we're going to keep battling because we have the right guys in the locker room that believe in what we're doing, and it's fun to be around those guys. Because every day, man, I get to sit here for punt and watch and send uh, Gilly and Beebs and those guys over there, and we have a blast. And it's fun to be around these guys because they are competitors. Yeah. 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 We need to get back to some basics, and and uh, I hope what what last week showed everybody is that we probably can have even more balance, and um, that's when I think we're the best offensively. Colin would probably say it. Will would say it is when we have really good balance and we're able to run the football to set up the pass, able to pass the football, but able to get a run on third and six when nobody expects it um, and be able to throw the football on first and ten and, and whatever it may be. Um, that's what I'm hoping we, we gained out of this last weekend. On the snap miscommunication, yep. as you explained it, was there anything more to it? No, they just, between Jack and Rand and they had a miscommunication. Yep. But the, I guess the, the duality of analytics and feel and the moment, how did, does that all change week to week? Yeah. In terms of what you go for on the yep. fourth down at the 46? Yeah, it's all feel. You know, there's everybody's got a book and analytics and stuff, um, and, and Sark would, would tell you the same thing. Cause he and I have talked about this. It still goes on to your gut feeling and how that game is going. You know, are you having success? Is it a 10 to 9 game against like Iowa State where you're like, man, we, we better punt the ball and be safe? Is it a 38 37 game or something where you have to keep possessions? Um, it's, it's, all, it's all a feel. It, it really is. And not only what the, what the score of the game is, how it's going, how are your players? You know, is it a, is it a home game and you got extra players? Is it an away game and it's 80 degrees and it's early November and you're hanging on by a thread? Because we've had a lot of games in a row. Remember, we had the earliest buy in this league and we've played a lot of games in a row. Our guys are beat up just like everybody else's guys are beat up. And so um, we had an opportunity to do something and honestly probably shocked the world being down 27-7 to 7 and have a chance to win that game. And, yep, we're all hurting for it. But, man, you gotta, you got to move on. We all have to move on. Coaches, players, everybody. That um, um, great thing is we get another opportunity on Saturday. Uh, no, I, I no, I wouldn't say that, because last year we were going to score on the first possession against Oklahoma State because we were coming off of a big loss and we had a fourth and ten at midfield and we went for it and Will hit Cade Cade Warner for a touchdown that changed the momentum of the game, changed the dynamic of that game going for it on fourth and ten, getting a touchdown strike from fifty yards. So it doesn't really matter. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good week.